help me as I introduce to the stage Mr. Hugh Riley, who has been at this, this juncture in the whole aspect of tourism presentation for quite some time. And we'd like to welcome Mr. Hugh Riley, Secretary General of the Caribbean Tourism Organization, to come forth and say a few words. Thank you very much, Irvin. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it is my pleasure and honor to be here this evening, and I'd like to um, recognize the Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Dominic Fiddy from St. Lucia, his uh, consultant and tourism expert, Agnes Francis, also from St. Lucia, Vice Consul for St. Lucia, I believe, as well. Thank you. Over here, we've got Mr. Billy Griffith, who's the Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Tourism Marketing Incorporated. Next to him is Donna Kadakin, who is the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism for Barbados. Dr. Donna Hunt-Cox is the Consul General for Barbados at New York. Mr. Hugh Foster is himself a tourism practitioner of many years uh, vintage and a public relations consultant with the Ministry of Tourism for Barbados as well. And, and he's the only one with a fan in the audience. How about that? Please applaud. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take your card later, man, because you're the, you're the first person who's ever applauded you, Foster, in any audience that I've been at. Uh, we've, got, we've got Dr. Kerry Hall, who's the Chief Executive Officer of Barbados Tourism Product uh, Authority here. I, I am, I'm almost certain to have missed somebody that I should have recognized. Please forgive me uh, if, I, if I have. My name is Hugh Riley. It's a pleasure to, to welcome you here. My words are very, very short. We need really just to say a couple of things. The Caribbean diaspora is the nucleus, the heart of what the Caribbean is overseas. There is nothing more important than going to a strange land and flying your flag and telling people to come back and break bread and share space with us in the Caribbean. So we really always appreciate it when you come with us, you come among us, and, 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 and we hope that you will take back with you some of the information that you will now share with people within your sphere of influence because we need to have them and you back to the Caribbean. And then the final thing that I'll say is this, uh, we, we know that you have clearly a reason, many reasons, to go back to the country of your parents' birth or to go back to the country of your birth. That's fine and you go back for a, a myriad of reasons, but also make a pledge if you can this year to go to some other Caribbean country that you haven't visited. So many, many of us have seen the major cities of the world, including this great one, without ever having seen the island that's shouting distance away from where we're from or where our parents were born. Let's change that. The whole Caribbean is ours. The whole Caribbean belongs to us and to our children. Let them go and enjoy the French and the Dutch and the Spanish and, and the English-speaking Caribbean like they've never seen before. So thank you for your continued support. Thank you. Thank you very much, you. For a moment there, we could almost say the forum is over because what he has just done is to capsule the whole idea of our culture and our heritage. And, and so, Ms. Mr. Hugh Foster, thank you very much for that opening because I, I think that really enlightens us as to why we're here this evening. But not only that, to show and demonstrate that we are actually doing things. It's actually real. And Carafest this year, of course, is going to be awesome in Barbados. So send the tickets. I'll be there. <laughs> All right. We getting ready? Do we? Okay. All right. As we prepare for the, our panels, I just want to also acknowledge at this time Mr. Kareem Adin Hassan, who is with the New York State Comptroller, Mr. DiNapoli, in Albany. It's always good to have these controller persons around here. Where is he? Where are you, sir? Thank you very much for being here, sir. No audits this year, okay? Great. Now, the theme, fulfilling the economic potential of culture and heritage. The Caribbean is recognized as having a vibrant and diverse yet unique heritage and a culture so rich as to be enviable. With culture and heritage contributing an estimated 625 billion to the global economy, the economic potential for the Caribbean is enormous. And with the sizable, well-educated, and affluent diaspora, whose large majority is invested and interested in its countries of origin, according to the World Bank, the Caribbean diaspora is well poised to fulfill its potential. The Diaspora Forum will explore how true partnerships can be forged with home, where the opportunities lie for tourism, what members of the diaspora have to offer, 
and how the true value of the region's culture and heritage can be realized for the members of the diaspora and the Caribbean tourism product. Ladies and gentlemen, we have put together a forum of individuals to talk to us based on their expertise and their ideas as to how we can forge these type of relationships, number one, but at the same time, find ways that we can monetize it. Because for too long now, we have just been mere consumers of the very things that we produce, while others bankroll and make the profits. Do I get an amen? Amen. amen. Right. Amen. So the whole idea this afternoon is to discuss with some of our officials who are here so they can hear from you here in the diaspora just where our intention, what our intentions are and the interest that we have to forge these type of relationships. So Marsha, we have some persons here we're going to bring to stage and whom do we have first to introduce on stage as they come up? Okay, I'm just going to share a little bit of information um, about who they are and what they do, and I'm going to leave the rest to them because they can. No one can better describe them than themselves. But Wilson Baptiste, um, he has over 25 years of experience in hotel and tourism, in the hotel industry and tourism, and he has been focused on sustainable tourism development. And Wilson formed Gems of Saint Lucia in 2008. And I think that's a significant accomplishment. Um, he's also been involved in projects to um, ensure that we promote sustainable development in the Caribbean, that we protect our natural environment and our coastal waters. And he's taken the Caribbean and its interests as far as Africa. And I, I understand, Wilson, it was in the, at the 40th Congress of the Africa Travel Association in Nairobi, Kenya in November. I would love for you to share some more about that experience and how you um, introduced the Caribbean uh, over there at that event. I think that's very amazing. I want to welcome you on stage. As Wilson makes his trek to the stage, our next panelist is Miss Shelley Worrell, and she's batting second today. No, I'm kidding. Worrell, of course, is what? Caribbean. What? Caribbean. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's one answer. Worrell again is? Three that is one of them. Thank you. What does that mean? Cricket. Cricket. Thank you very much. Keep it simple, guys. Come on. <laughs> She's the founder and chief curator of Caribbean, a thriving cultural organization that stands at the crossroads of film and art and culture. Since its founding, Shelley has produced over 200 public programs, reaching over 100,000 attendees. Now, she is one of those persons who is so adept and fully Caribbean that she is not necessarily cosmopolitan but she's Caribbean, she's Carib politician. I like to call her, no, I'm not kidding. She's more Caribbean than any person in this room because wherever she goes, she speaks and breathes Caribbean. And she's all about the culture and her heritage. Put your hands together for Shelley Ward. <laughs> now, the other person, and you know, he provided me, you know, let me tell you, one thing I know about our people here is that when it comes down to representing, and we do it well, but you see, he gave me his bio, but I decided not to. I'm gonna speak to him because I know him as this person. Have you ever heard of a one-person conglomerate? I'm gonna introduce you to one tonight. Mr. Jerry Hopkins. You should clap for that. Jerry. Public relations consultant. He hosts uh, what we say networking parties. A consummate Caribbean man, a person with a wealth of experience and understanding as to what our Caribbean community is. When he comes up here, of course, you know more of it. Put your hands together for Mr. Jerry Hopkins.
I also want to let our folks know so that this evening's event is made possible because we've had some kind contributions from Grace, quality since 1922, Tower Isles Patties, and of course our airlines in the sky, Caribbean Airlines. A round of applause for us. Forgetting I have my own yeah, mic. Yeah, you have your own mic, my dear. I mean, you're Huffington, aren't you? Yeah, girl power. <laughs> okay, I want to invite everyone here to get involved in the discussion. And you want to take out your smartphones, you want to head to Twitter, you want to head to Instagram. And on Twitter, you want to use the hashtag CWNY2017. So if you want to say something that you think is important, you think it needs to be heard, just hashtag CWNY2017 so that we can see it. And I want to ask you to follow the CTO on Twitter and Instagram. And that's at CTO Tourism on Twitter and at CTO Tourism on Instagram. And when you share your beautiful photos of the Caribbean, just add that at CTO Tourism so they can see that you are being ambassadors for the Caribbean as well. At this point, I'm going to ask the, our panelists to give a, a brief uh, summation of themselves and of the topic that we're discussing this evening. I'm going to start with um, Mr. Wilson Baptiste. Wilson? Hello, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And we are fortunate that we are having this discussion at this time when there is so much trepidation in the Caribbean with regards to cultural and heritage tourism. However, in order for us to understand and fully address the challenges, we must properly define that segment of the tourism sector. Who owns it? Where are they located? And how can they be used to ele alleviate the level of poverty in certain sectors of Caribbean society? In addition to that, we have to look at the value of cultural and heritage tourism to the global tourism sector. It is a growing sector that, that will provide the Caribbean with tremendous potential for growth. However, we have to be able to understand who the cultural tourists are. They are not the regular hotel tourists. They are unique. They are looking for experiences. They want to experience a place. Wake up on mornings and see that they are somewhere. And as a result, this is going to provide the indigenous people in the Caribbean with economic benefits from tourism like they have never felt before. In addition to that now, we have to look at the role of the diaspora in the development of that specific segment. And the roles that we can play is marketing. For instance, we had Gems of the Caribbean where marketing is everybody's business. We do it, but we have to formalize that structure. In the area of investment, some of the cultural heritage tourism assets are owned by indigenous people who do not know the value proposition of those assets and as such, we have to look at ourselves as investing in these products to bring about greater benefits to them. And thirdly, in the area of skills transfer, we have to be able to transfer our skills to that segment, thereby ensuring that we maximize the potential of that segment to the Caribbean Thank and you. its people. Thank you very much, Wilson. Um, you, you mentioned Culture of tourism. I'm gonna to switch to, 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 to Jerry. Talk, talk to us about cultural tourism. What is it? What does it mean? What is cultural tourism? When we, when we speak of cultural tourism, of course we have to begin with what is culture. Culture, as most of us would know, is the sum of attitudes, customs, and beliefs that distinguishes one group of people from another. Culture is transmitted through language, uh, material objects, rituals, institutions, art, from one generation to the next. And there's more to it than that, and we'll get into it as we, as we engage each other and interactively here this evening. Heritage, the traditions, the achievements, and beliefs that are part of the history of a group of people. Uh, but we have to move 
culture in the context of looking for the opportunities to optimize the potential of cultural and heritage tourism. We have to move from the old paradigm where we saw the attractions in the Caribbean, for example, as being beach, sun, toes, food. Where primarily the hotels, the taxi drivers, uh, the tour guides, and the government collected the taxes, and the employees at the hotels and the ones who, who chauffeur the cars are the ones who primarily benefited. And maybe this, the farmers, to some extent, where they utilize the local produce. But we have to go beyond that and embrace the paradigm in which we see our people, all of us, as stakeholders. The, 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 the farmers, the cooks, the, the craftsmen, the, the, the artists, the singers, the dancers, the athletes who brand and endorse products, the Usain Bolts, the Kiranis of the Caribbean, the managers, the accountants, the promoters, the organizers, all of them, plus others, we must embrace and find ways and means to, to involve in the process of managing and, and tapping into what we have as, as, as culture and heritage in all its forms, in all, in, in all its manifestations. All right, thank you very much, sir. No. <laughs> Shelley, um, you, you, this is where the rubber hits the road, because that's what you, you're doing, I mean. So, the, the, the challenges, the expectations, the opportunities, Hello, Barrow. Barrow Edgecombe from Den Bahamians. Um, now, you're the uh, director yes, I am. of Caribbean Tourism Organization. Now, this year um, has been a really, so far, from what I've seen, it's been a really fabulous week. Now, from your point of view, as an insider, um, how has this week really accomplished what you plan to, uh, you know, well, the objective, the objective of Caribbean Week is to ensure that our member countries benefit from the things that we do in New York for Caribbean Week. Eh? And I have not he heard any feedback yet that anybody has been dissatisfied with anything that we've done, so I would venture to say that we've accomplished the objective we set out to. And what was one of the objectives that you wanted to accomplish? To showcase the Caribbean, to provide opportunities for member countries to meet and interact with the media and tell their stories so that the media writes it the way the members want it told. Now, uh, attending uh, your Monday night uh, event, uh, it seems you said culture seemed to be one of the things that they're projecting uh, for the future for uh, the Caribbean islands. Um, what do you have to say about that? Well, there's a trend toward cultural tourism. The culture in the Caribbean is probably the most exciting anywhere. And um, visitors today are interested in immersing themselves in the cultural experiences of the destinations that they visit. So it was appropriate for us to talk with our diaspora about how they can contribute, even in this marketplace, to promoting Caribbean culture and um, finding ways to benefit financially from culture. Well, well, it's a trend, and, and um, our members are up on the trends. Um, we know that consumers are looking for cultural experiences. We know heritage tourism is important to them, and uh, the diaspora understands how important that is to them as well. So it's both. It's a collision of both worlds. Now, um, tomorrow is Friday night. It's a big event. Yes. I've attended a few of them. Yes. And um, it is very interesting to see the uh, layout of all the islands being participating with their top chefs and all of the rums from the island. What is the uh, main focus of the rum and rhythm? Well, from your point of view, that's my point of view. The, mo the objective of Ramen Rhythm is to raise funds for the CTO Foundation, but the Caribbean is so colorful in its music, its history, its food, its culture. Why not use that uh, to help raise funds to educate Caribbean nationals to study tourism and hospitality and keep the industry alive and vibrant? So, from our point of view, Ramen Rhythm culminates Caribbean Week, uh, but it's it's... 
it is not just a party, it's a party with a cause. It's an opportunity for us to promote the award-winning rums of the Caribbean, to showcase the culinary expertise and excellence of our chefs in the Caribbean, um, to showcase unusual music coming from the Caribbean, and enjoy a good time, not just with the Caribbean diaspora, but young professionals and other dem um, demographics that can take a Caribbean vacation. Well, there are surprises. The committee would probably not want me to name some of the events, but one we have promoted is Xavier Strings. They're young um, musicians from Trinidad and Tobago, and they perform soca and calypso and reggae and blues, a wide repertoire of music uh, on a violin. So that is something that we're all very excited about um, experiencing tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing else now. No, I mean, um, the theme of the event, Caribbean Week, is where business and culture collide. Um, but Caribbean, this is the 45th year that the Caribbean Tourism Organization has been holding a Caribbean Week in New York. It's evolved over the years. Once upon a time, it, was a, it ended with a huge black tie gala event at which we recognized the cultural icons and musical icons and people who'd made significant contributions to the development of tourism. Um, we've, we're looking at having a black tie gala again. That's something that we plan to reinstitute down the road. But in the meantime, we thought that we would focus on the rums, which are just such a critical part of the, the product. Um, focus on the rums and the music and the culture and have our um, Caribbean lovers and friends of the Caribbean and Caribbean diaspora have a good time. I think um, you know, the rum and rhythm is such a unique and really a wonderful experience that um, I hope that um, in the future more islanders and also island lovers will, will, will come and experience this one night of going from Jamaica, Bahamas, Turks and Caicos. Yeah, I think it's wonderful and uh, I know it's a wonderful idea and I hope that you do not substitute that for the black tie? Well, no, because the idea is not to substitute anything for the black tie because we think both of them can can happen um, during Caribbean week. Um, and if not during Caribbean week, they can both happen in the marketplace. But I want to thank people like you for getting the word out to your audiences so that they can come out and support us. Yes, I think that um, I'll give uh, Dem Bahamians, we'll give uh, your yeah, organization, the, Baham the Caribbean Tourism Organization, and your yeah, Caribbean Week, uh, the, the 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 most that we can give, uh, so that um, a lot of Caribbean and uh, Caribbean lovers come and experience this week. I, I find that it's a infusion of all the islands under one roof, and uh, you know what a better way to um, at least feel it before you get there. Absolutely, okay. that's what this is. Get a taste of the Caribbean and then go and experience the real thing. Uh, that's what rum and rhythm is about. Um, it has been a pleasure, Selma. Thank and uh, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very and, much. Uh, by the way, um, the scholarship, is this a non-profit organization? Yes, the, the scholarships are offered by the Caribbean Tourism Organization, which is a 501c3. And um, we've offered about a million dollars worth of scholarships to students from across the Caribbean who are interested in studying tourism and hospitality and languages. And um, I have to put a plug in for the excellent students that we offer scholarships to. The great demand for the scholarship and the unfortunate lack of funds that the foundation has. So this is an appeal to your audience to make a contribution to the Caribbean Tourism Organization Foundation. We really need it. We have lots of students who we have to say 
No to. Not because they are not worthy candidates, but because there are not sufficient funds to offer as many scholarships as, demand, as are demanded. Okay, I thank you and I hope that uh, my audience um, can appreciate what you're doing and um, support your foundation. It's a non-profit organization and uh, it's tax deductible and I'm sure that, um, you know, they'll be happy to. Those who can afford will give generously and those who can afford will give at least five dollars. How's That's that? Five, every okay. dollar helps and every dollar that the foundation raises goes towards scholarships. None of it goes toward overhead. We put our time in, CTO covers all of the overhead expenses because every single penny that the foundation raises goes to scholarships. So just one last thing, it's the end of 2017, tomorrow night is Ramen Rhythm, but your audience um, should stay tuned for Caribbean Week 2018, which is happening again the first week of June, June the week of June 4th, and Ramen Rhythm will be on that Friday night. Great, thank you very much, and uh, I hope to see you tomorrow. I will be there tomorrow night, okay, along with my uh, group of friends, okay. and uh, so I can uh, I can encourage we them to have come. An and excellent experience in store for you, so we hope you'll enjoy. I wish or you'll enjoy. Yeah, I am looking forward to it. It's not okay. the first time, and that's why I'm back again. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Hi, my name is Beryl Edgecombe. I'm with Dem Bahamians mm -hmm. program scene here in New York City. Okay. Uh, you're from. Your name is. Enzi. Enzi, I'm from Haiti. And uh, I'm working for the Ministry of Tourism in Haiti. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Now, um, this year, the Caribbean Tourism Organization is featuring the culture. Yeah. That really is steep in its culture. Mm -hmm. um, what are you emphasizing here uh, at this show? Okay. Um, the Caribbean Week, it's, it's a, 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 big, a big event for us in Haiti to sell what we have our uh, what we have as culture because in Haiti you know we have beautiful beautiful uh, people we have uh, beautiful nature we have a strong culture and we have uh, beautiful uh, only the in, in Haiti is beautiful you know okay. now mm -hmm. okay actually we we have about a thousand a thousand whom, a thousand whom, and not uh, the number of hotels. We 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 put accent on on the rooms, not the hotels. Actually, we had a thousand rooms in Haiti uh, available. Eight thousand rooms. Mm. Uh, is that uh, in, in the capital or is that in the in the community? No, no, no. In not not only in the capital, all over the country. All over the country. Yeah. Oh, our, our music, our dance, our uh, artisana, uh, yeah, our, our food, it's well known in the Caribbean, and our people also. Okay, the, what, the, what mm -hmm. kind of food are you talking about? Uh, um, you know, black yes, <laughs> we have black rice in our country, and I'm not too... Uh, we have uh, our coffee, uh, coffee. Uh, well known, our chocolate. Yes. Uh, our. What things do you grow there in, in Haiti? What to say? What other products do you grow in Haiti that is exported out of Haiti? Uh, our worm. Yes, we have barbecue. It's a uh, well known worm uh, in the world. If mm. someone wants to visit your country, mm -hmm. how, you have a website? Uh, how, how do we. Uh, yes, you can uh, visit. Uh, visit Haiti.com and you will find information about Haiti, about what to do in Haiti, and about how to come in Haiti. And Haiti is welcome you. We mm. have a population of French speaking uh, mm. audience. I mm -hmm. always said watch my watch time behavior. Mm -hmm. Do you want to speak to my um, audience uh, in French? Oh, bien sûr. <laughs> Je suis très honoré d'être là à participer au Caribbean Week pour Haïti. Nous sommes euh, très contents d'être parmi tous ces pays de la Caraïbe qui votent leur culture. Et nous savons aussi qu'au niveau de la Caraïbe, Haïti a une, a une culture extrêmement forte à travers notre artisanat, à travers notre musique, à travers notre gastronomie. 
et on aurait bien aimé les avoir en Haïti et Haïti les attend. Et Haïti euh, veut vous voir et nous vous attendons pour faire la fête avec vous chez nous en Haïti. Haïti, c'est là pour là. Visit Haiti.com. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So. Yes, I'm Kathy Priest. I work for Adams Unlimited. We are the PR and marketing representatives for St. Kitts and Nevis here in the U.S. Okay, and uh, so what are you featuring at this uh, market trade show today? Uh, here, we're basically just here to talk to journalists about St. Kitts, to give them some story ideas, talk about what makes St. Kitts and Nevis unique, and pique their interest so that maybe they'll write about us. Okay, now, what in particular are you uh, specializing or fo focusing on today? Um, today, we I, I could tell you about certainly what's unique. That's usually what we do focus on is our unique selling points. Um, three attractions are, are very unique. St. Kitts has a very, uh, very strong historic angle to it. Um, one of those attractions is called the St. Kitts Scenic Railway. And what's unique about it, it was built on the original tracks for the railway that used to travel around the island and take the sugar from the different plantations back to the factory. So they refurbished those narrow gauge tracks and have now been using it as a scenic passenger railway, which tourists love. Um, Caribbean Islands? Yes. Um, are you featuring uh, the, car the culture of St. Kitts and its people? At this time? Of course, yes. It's always a focus in everything we do. Um, like I was just telling you about the railway, they have a folkloric choir and it's very dedicated to the history, the sugar history of St. Kitts. So, you have several items here. What are some of the products uh, that you feature? Oh, certainly. Um, well, here, mostly what we're featuring here is the soaps and fragrance sachets from Carabelle Batique. Carabelle Batique is, if not the, it, I think it may be the last, or is one of the last places in the Caribbean where they manufacture the batik fabric by hands in using the traditional method of wax and dip dye. In St. Kitts. In St. Kitts, yes. Well. And the soap as well, yes. They both come from. The fragrances are actually from a partnership that we have with Tommy Bahama, the brand. Um, they named the fragrances, they love the island so much that they named their fragrances after St. Kitts. So that is Tommy Bahama St. Kitts for men and Tommy Bahama St. Kitts for women. So ingredients are from St. Kitts? It was inspired by the smells and scents of St. Kitts. So some of the ingredients are things like star fruits. You know that that has it has that type of a, a smell to it, and same thing in the soaps as well. The soaps, yes, are definitely fragrances from the island. There's jasmine, there's mango, there's all different different fragrances that we're featuring. What is, what is so unique about the, the soaps as compared with all the other soaps? Because they're part of the Carabao Batik factory, they're made there and they're wrapped in a nice batik fabric that is so, so unique. Rum, of course, we have rum. It's the Caribbean. <laughs> yes, um, Brindley Gold Rum is. Um, yes, Brindley Gold Rum is manufactured on St. Kitts. It's sold here in the states as well as in St. Kitts. Um, and there's a couple of the different flavors. There is vanilla. There is coffee. There is mango, coconut. Uh, the shipwreck rum, which is a spiced rum, and they've just launched a new white rum. Say. Tourists. Tourists. Um, cultural foods is um, salt fish is very popular, of course. Salt fish and aki is hugely popular on island, um, and of course all of the wonderful fruits that grow naturally, like star fruits and mangoes. Um, we have so many varieties of mangoes, and they're all delicious. Yes. About a hundred, believe it or not. Yes, on such a small island, it's only 64 square miles, but uh, one of the properties that we have there is called Belmont Farm. It's basically a small hotel, but it's built around a sustainable farm. And one of the things that they have is uh, a variety of mango trees, and there are a hundred different varietals up there. So you have a lot of beverages in that are made from the mango there? Of course, yes, all fruit juices. So we do a lot of passion fruit juice. Mango juice, all types of star fruit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. It's been lovely Thank talking you. to you. Good. Thank and, you. Uh, I'm Daryl Edgecombe. I'm with uh, Dan Bahamians. I'm Dean Fenton with the Antigua and Barbuda Tourism Department. Oh, good. Pleasure yes. meeting you. 
Same. Now, Dan Bahamian is seen here in New York City, uh, Brooklyn, Browns, Queens, and uh, Bahamas as well. Okay, so um, this year, the Bahamas, the Caribbean Tourist Organization, is featuring the cultures of the islands. Um, what are you featuring at this uh, annual event? Well, basically, we're here to tell people about our new products coming on stream. We have some new properties coming. Example, the Waldorf a story is coming. We also have a new room. It's called Skull Gallery, and we're pr pr you know promoting that as well with our Cavalier rum. Take a look at it. Yeah, like I said, Skull Gallery, and uh, it's an uh, Antiguan rum, Cavalier rum, and uh, yeah, we just here trying to get people down to the destination to get some ink. I beg your pardon. Waldorf, the Waldorf. Waldorf yeah. Yes. Uh, how many uh, rooms are we talking about? Um, it's going to be boutique, maybe, of, uh, maybe around 80 rooms or so. Is this a replica of what they have here in New um, No, more of a Caribbean feel to it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay, and when is it opening? 18 months. In 18 months? Yes. Okay, so you're taking um, hotel reservations down? No, not yet, but uh, we will be taking them pretty soon. We will be taking them pretty soon. Yes, ma'am. Now, if anyone wants information on this hotel, where do you go? Like, well, you go to our major website, www.visitantigabarbuda.com and uh, there should be some information on the site. Anything else that you'll be um, featuring or at this time? Or? Well, we have our 60th year of Carnival coming up in August. Um, it starts uh, July 20, the last Thursday in July actually, and it goes for 10 days. So we, yeah, we're encouraging people to come on down and revel in the streets with us. Okay, and um, they can go to your website as well? They can go to our website, which is www.visitantiga.com and uh, they could get information on our carnival there as well. Now, tell us about your carnival. What's being featured there? Uh, well, basically our carnival actually takes us back to 1834 from the emancipation of slavery. And we, the slave heard the news, they ran to the street, celebrated, and we still celebrate up to today the same way, with the food, the families running to the streets, jubilation. And it's the same re replica of what happened in 1834 when the, when the message came down that everybody was freed. Okay, and so um, you have the John Parade? Or no. Carnival Parade, sorry. Yeah, it's Carnival. Carnival yeah, Parade. yeah. And um, what else? No, uh, nightlife. It, so it's, it goes on for 10 days and it's authentic food, um, pageantries, people taking to the streets, seal band competition, clips of competition, like I said. And it goes on for 10 days in the city of St. John's. St. John's, that's captive. Yes. Okay, and um, what else do you know about, the, about Antigua and Barbuda that you know, you can well, know Well, Barbuda is our sister island. Antigua is the main island with all the restaurants, shops, and, and what have you. And Barbuda is our sister island. Less developed, but very beautiful. Very, it's more for the outdoor personality, very eco-friendly. The, the, the home to the largest frigate bird sanctuary. So if you're a nature lover, you want to come to Barbuda as well. Looking at some of the pictures in the background here, uh, you are very mountainous. Um, not so really. It's very mountainous. It's not very mountainous. It's very flat, actually. Barbuda is, yeah. Do you have some uh, high elevation? Just 1,400 feet. That's about it. Uh -huh. Just 1,400 feet. It's not a very um, mountainous island at all. Uh -huh. okay. And uh, what kind of products do you have there that's grown in the island? Well, we don't really export per se, just everything's basically for local consumption. So we have like, you know, banana trees, spinach, you know, okras, more of Caribbean products that we grow for local consumption. That's the nectar of the gods. That's our Cavalier rum and it's beautiful, like I said. Um, you should try it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And your name again is? My name is Dean Fenton. I'm the marketing direct, uh, sales and marketing manager for Antigua and Barbuda. Okay, and we can get information? At www.visitantiguabarbuda.com. It's a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Right. Thanks. My television show is called Dem Bahamians. Uh-huh. And good. Um, we've, we've, we're shown here in uh, New York City as well as Brooklyn, Bronx, Queens. Um, can you introduce yourself? My name's Fred Lounsbury. I'm the CEO of the Nassau Paradise Island Promotion Board. Okay, so now 
you're here at the uh, Caribbean Tourism Organization uh, annual trade show event. We are. Um, uh, can you tell me what in particular are you featuring at this particular show? Well, we represent all the hotels in Nassau Paradise Island, all of our members. So we're talking to the press about all the new, everything new at in Nassau and Paradise Island, uh, all the new, uh, ch all the changes at Atlantis with the Coral Tower uh, being uh, redone, a lot of the new additions to Atlantis with bringing in uh, Bahamian culture, cuisine, entertainment, uh, all the all the changes there, as well as of course the new Bahamar, which is slowly opening. Uh, as we move forward. The Grand Hyatt is open now and as they build and add uh, more of the restaurants and activities there uh, over the next six, eight months with the additional SLS Hotel and Rosewood, plus all the changes at all the other hotels in, in uh, Nassau and Paradise Island. The new Warwick, which opened last fall, the uh, all-inclusive Warwick on Paradise Island, the um, Upcoming part of the, uh, Paradise Island. promotion board, yes. No, that is their own. It's a Warwick uh, all inclusive, uh, which opened last October uh, for 18 and older. So it's an adult, uh, or 18 and older, I guess they're adults most places. Young adults, Young adults. <laughs> all inclusive, uh, very nice hotel. Um, of course, at the point downtown. Uh, the Hilton, near the Hilton, um, of course the Point is opening a 200 room uh, lifestyle hotel which will open in a couple of years, right at the foot of Bay Street. They opened the big parking garage earlier, late, what, a few months ago. Uh, so a lot of development there. Our main message here to the press is there's a lot of change everywhere. New hotels, existing hotels going through major changes. Uh, the Atlantis Resort, the Bahama Resort, a um, lot of change. Is it, is it, um, Caribbean Tourism Organization uh, this uh, year is emphasizing the cultures of the Caribbean islands. Absolutely. What are, are, you, um, are you emphasizing the hotels? De absolutely, absolutely. I think, you know, in that category, Atlantis is probably the best example of what's going on at a number of the hotels with, um, they're taking Marina Village and adding a lot of Bahamian cuisine and entertainment, art, as well as within the resort, entertainment, cuisine, doing Junkanoo several times a week, just bringing the culture in to, to, um, to Atlanta so that folks coming to Atlantis get a better taste of the Bahamian culture, the food. A lot of the food is, is one of the big items that they are planning to infuse more and more of over the next coming, over the coming months. So, so uh, they hope to entertain and buy the Bahamian uh, musicians? And, mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, 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 and that's it's. Atlantis is probably doing the the big job right now with that. I don't know if you've seen their marketing, but they're it's very, very, uh, very much emphasizing the whole storytelling of the Bahamas, the storytelling of uh, what the Bahamian culture means. Um, so, and that's being extended elsewhere, other hotels. Bahamar is is ramping up, but they have a lot, you know all of the Bahamian art within the uh, Bahamas is all Bahamian artwork by Bahamians, and uh, they're going to be infusing Bahamian culture as well. I'm not sure in the rooms, but all the public areas, the convention center uh, at Bahamar. Um, I've been told 99% of it is Bahamian artists did it all. And I know a lot of that's coming to Atlantis as well, um, as, as a lot of the refurbishments get finalized over the next, next few months. So. I think through the arts, you, see, you get, begin to see a different expression of the people of that island, which I think you know, through the arts um, where 
the visitor might not be able to get to to that particular place that that artist is featuring. Right. They bring it's they bring it to them in that form, which yeah, I think is, is really um, you know a plus for you know the management you know, it, of it, it, uh, it's, it, 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 it's a plus to the it's a plus to just enhance the experience. Right. You know, travelers now they want experiences. They're exactly. trying to experience. Uh, the people, the food, the cuisine, entertainment. I mean, they still want to see the beautiful, the beautiful water and the beach is still going to be number one, but it, it just it adds another dimension to to what we're doing. And uh, you know, everyone can't come for Junkanoo the two nights a week that it's held. So it's being able to give them a taste of that um, whenever they're here on vacation. It just it's added. It, it, it's a it gives the destination a very, a, a terrific of point of difference. The island, uh, or the right. location has to offer. Exactly. I think it's really great. No, I think it is. And I yeah. think it'll, uh, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, it's just kind of coming on stream now. A lot of it is still being developed and in the works, but I think it's a great, uh, I think in the next six, eight months, you're going to see a whole lot more of it everywhere. It's all about experiences. You look at all the travel research, the millennials, that which is our, our big, big target market. It's about the experiences, and we're reflecting it in our marketing and uh, television and online uh, marketing. And it's it's uh, you know a room is a room. You know you want they want a nice room, they want a great room, and uh, believe me, right? You know. It's all additive. It's not. In, it's not instead of. It's. It just gives enough. You know, if they stay another day to experience going to a excursion to Exuma to swim with the pigs or to go on a to go out and see snorkel or go do some of these experiences, it helps because they stay an extra day. Uh, it lengthens their length of stay, and it's going to be a better. It's better for tourism overall to to get them get them out and experience all these things that to perform for us is La Truth Zetoile from Haiti. They're going to be performing next. Bye. 
for you right now. Station. 
St. Kitts, St. Davis, St. Lucia, Dutch St. Martin, French St. Martin, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Trinidad and Tobago, the Turks and Caicos Islands, United States Virgin Islands, Venezuela, and the Caribbean Tourism Organization.